Hello everyone, back to you to today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next week to 10 days, or today's second video, uh, which takes us to around the 17th of uh, April. And we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the extended GFS and ECM ensembles over to around a couple of weeks. I'll look at CFSB2 at the end of the video uh, for the next four weeks. The ECM 30 day look ahead has been released uh, a few minutes ago. So um, that's looking at the weather for the next four weeks across the UK and the rest of Europe as well. Have a look at that and see what's going on there. Uh, now, before I do anything else, I've got to say a big thank you to our latest PayPal donor. So a uh, big thank you. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, hello as well uh, to latest PayPal donor. The guys is Adrian Major. Adrian Major has become our latest uh, PayPal donor. So a big thank you, Adrian, uh, for doing that. Thank you so much, uh, my friend, for becoming our latest um, donor for Gaz Office. If you would like to become a donor of Gaz Office, all you need to do is come to Gaz Office PayPal page, sign into your PayPal account, make you whatever donation you would like to Gaz Office. Uh, by doing that, um, you are becoming a donor of the Gaz Office, and we're going to get you a mention in videos as long as you want. When a few people have chosen to stay uh, anonymous, so that's absolutely fine if that's the case. But otherwise, <coughs> excuse me, we'll give you a shout out and we'll say thank you so much uh, for doing that. Uh, there's also uh, Patreon uh, as well. So we've got 62 patrons at the moment. Hello and a big thank you to our 62 patrons. If you'd like to become a patron of the Gals Webbies, then all you need to do is come to the Gals Webbies Patreon page. You sign in up for a Patreon account, assuming you don't already have one. And then you can uh, give an ongoing monthly donation. It can be anything from $1 a month upwards to Gals Webbies. And by doing that, you're going to become a patron of Gals Webbies. We're going to give you a mention in videos. I will say thank you so much uh, for doing that. So if you do it through pay, Patreon or PayPal, you'll get a mention and we'll say thank you uh, so much. So a big thank you to all of our patrons and a big thank you to all of our donors. You're having us to pay for uh We are primarily as funded and will be remaining so because we're going through the coronavirus uh, crisis at the moment, which is causing huge economic um, shockwaves. And the ads aren't generating anywhere near as much as they would normally do so. So the other revenue streams at the moment are very, very helpful to uh, be able to help uh, keep uh, the, the website and everything going until the ad rates pick up quite when that will be. Of course, nobody knows. It just depends how long um, the whole world remains in lockdown as uh, we all currently are at the moment as we try to avoid this dreadful, dreadful virus. And talking of lockdown, of course, while we're in lockdown, we are doing live streams uh, on the YouTube channel every Wednesday and every Sunday afternoon. Uh, so next live stream coming up um, between uh, 4 and 5 o'clock on Wednesday tomorrow. Um, there will be a live stream on the Gals Over YouTube channel just to allow everybody to get together and uh, see how we're all doing during this period of self-isolation and uh, lockdown. It's a very nasty period uh, for all of us. But as I keep saying, we will get through it. We're going to get through it together and um, eventually we will come out on the other side. Uh, but anyway, a big thank you to our patrons, big thank you to, to our donors, and a special thank you to Adrian Major. Thank you so much, Adrian, uh, for doing that. Right, we're going to get on with video then, and we'll start off with the uh, GFS Upper Air Temperature and Precipitation Ensembles for the next couple of weeks. We're looking at London and our Wetter Central uh, today. So red line is the 30-year Upper Air Temperature Average for London. We're above average at the moment, and we're going to be staying above average over the next week to 10 days. So up to the middle part of uh, April, well and truly into, and probably beyond the East period, actually, uh, we see upper air temperatures holding up very nice. There is a slight dip there around Easter, certainly to Easter Monday, more about that in a moment, because of all sorts of problems this Easter period. Um, but uh, overall, uh, for the next week, 10 days above average temperatures, then a slide of a temperature as we go into the, uh, into the extended range with the um, GFS ensemble. So that's unreliable time frame stuff of the GFS and its ensembles. Um, but it does look as though things probably get a little bit cooler, actually, as we move into the second half of the month. I've been channeling this in the... Uh, videos and in the updates a lot recently, but the first half of April looks relatively dry and warm. Second half of April possibly looks a little bit more unsettled and cooler, which is quite unusual as April tends to be a warming month. It tends to be a month that you associate with things getting warmer as the month progresses from beginning to end. Um, but we might be going to do things a little bit the other way round uh, with this. We'll have to see about that because, of course, this is all very extended range and unreliable time frame stuff. 
Now, loads of dry weather running up to Easter, but over Easter, have got a few precipitation spikes. Again, more about that in a moment. And then after Easter, maybe a more unsettled interlude there sometime around 16th, 17th of April before we possibly start to go a bit drier again later on. Overall, that's a relatively dry ensemble, though, uh, for, for London for the next couple of weeks. So down in the south east, it looks like things should be relatively dry. Temperature anomalies from the 7th to the 15th of April are above average. Only a little bit for Scotland, near normal actually for Scotland. For England and Wales, the temperature normally is around a couple of degrees above average. Most parts of Europe looking uh, milder than average as well, quite significantly um, so. Precipitation anomalies drier than average, really, from the 7th to the 15th of April. Most parts of UK and Ireland are coming out drier than average. Although near normal precipitation for parts of England and Wales, perhaps suggesting the risk of some heavier showers at times at some point through this period. So that's how the GFS is looking for Friday. And on Friday, we're uh, beginning to see a weakening of high pressure. That's drifting away to the east. A trough of low pressure is coming in from the northwest. That possibly turns us a little bit showery as we go into Easter Saturday. And then Easter Sunday. Now, this is a change on what we saw yesterday with yesterday's uh, Easter update uh, that we did last night. Uh, yes, the evening, I suppose. Um, now, this latest GFS run is pulling the high pressure out to the northwest for Easter Sunny and dropping a trough of low pressure in from the north. Um, so I think just uh, we've had just about every solution possible, every solution imaginable has appeared for this um, Easter within the model album, particularly the GFS runs, which have been chummy and changing so much over the past few days. And uh, yes, now we've got the idea of a trough dropping in from the north, freezer certainly, which would bring cool t um, temperatures southwards and also risk of some heavy showers too. Uh, so we move on through Easter Sunday and that trough continues to drop south with the ridge builds uh, behind it. We get through to Easter Monday, high pressure out to the northwest. Winds are turning into the east then. Um, so it's turning drier, but probably quite cool, especially down in the south where we have those easterly winds as we get through to Easter Monday. Uh, beyond that, high pressure then starts to re-establish over the top of the country. Probably quite cold in the back reach though for a while, so it could be some light frost. And then through the second half of next week, the high pressure begins to slip away to the east, and low pressure begins to develop out to the north and west. So as we get towards day 10, we do look a little bit more unsettled, with low pressure sitting to the west of Ireland. We've also got hints of a Greenland high. We've got a ridge across central parts of Europe, so it's all going on there. The upshot is that it's probably showery, and at that point, relatively mild. In the more extended range with this uh, GFS run, eventually we push up, uh, the low pressure eastwards and turn wind into the north. So it's up pulled down quite a cold northerly as we get through to Tuesday, 21st of April. As we saw within the GFS ensembles, there are hints of some colder weather as we move into the second half of the month. But of course, that is very extended range and unreliable time frame stuff. Uh, the GM looks like that, so high pressure again, sort of slipping away as we go into Good Friday. A trough of low pressure coming in from the Atlantic, brings some showers. And then we've got this next boat sort of sinking down across the country again over Easter Sunday to Easter Monday. That could bring showers or longer spells of rain. And it could start to turn wind into the north to northeast as well. So becoming cooler and more unsettled over the Easter weekend. We've definitely taken a step backwards in terms of the weather for this Easter. It does look as though it could be rather cool and showery, especially around sort of Easter Sunday, unfortunately. Uh, by the time we get through to the early part of next week, beyond Easter, high pressure begins to re-establish. We have got quite a chilly easterly wind. The high pressure eventually sort of slips away to the east and low pressure starts to come in from west. By day 10, we look quite unsettled with the GM. Low pressure out to west. Bands of showers along the spells of rain moving in from off the Atlantic. And probably not particularly exciting temperatures either. The ECM looks like that. So again, high pressure is uh, weakening on uh, Good Friday, allowing a trough to come in from off the Atlantic, bringing some showers for Easter Saturday. And then we just look generally quite as settled as we get through to Easter Sunday. Low pressure is very close to the country. That low pressure slips southwards by Easter Monday, allowing high pressure to build to the north and west behind below. So we turn, um, yes, we turn drier, but we are putting in some quite cold winds from the north to northeast. And then by Tuesday next week, so beyond Easter, high pressure sitting back over top of the country again. 
Not for long, though. And as we get towards day 10, we're back into unsettled conditions. So I think we can definitely say that the models have got a more unsettled and changeable look to them today certainly from the easter period anyway so uh, if you like warm dry weather it could be that message from a model output today is to make most of the next few days because from easter onwards things are looking a little bit more changeable i have to say although the ensemble here is not particularly unsettled it's not overly dramatic i mean precipitation only is largely driving average nevertheless as we go through the model output and drill down into the detail it does look as though things could be turning rather more unsettled from Easter onwards. But again, I have to emphasise, we've seen so much chopping and changing with model output over the past few days. It, it is difficult to have, um, you know, it's difficult to have much, uh, much confidence in what these models are showing today from Easter onwards, I must say. Uh, this the precipitation forecast from Tometo.com based on that ECM run. Loads of dry weather coming up over the next few days. Some rain in the far northwest of Scotland, but many of us are going to be dry over the coming days. But as we go through towards Easter, we find things just getting more showery initially out to the north and the west. But eventually all areas begin to turn rather more unsettled. This is Easter Sunday with some rain down across more southern parts of the country, for example. Sort of wash out of an Easter bank holiday weekend, so it's not overly wet. We're not talking about a washout, but or hopefully we're not. But uh, certainly a bit on the showery side. As we move into our extended range, again showers, long as well as rain, beginning to appear from the southwest as we get towards the middle part of uh, of the month. This is uh, 16th of April. Being showers here look a bit thundery actually across western parts of the country. There, that's how look as we get to day 10 quite unsettled. These are the options on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10 for the Icelandic Met Office. This gets us to the 17th of April. We have 14 members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure dominating. So they're going to be mainly dry and probably quite warm with winds coming in from the southeast. Another 14 just here with high pressure to the east. Low pressure is out to the west. So probably quite warm. Winds from a southerly direction but could be a bit showery. Uh, 11 with high pressure more towards Scandinavia, low pressure tucking in from the Atlantic. They could be quite changeable. 10 with a ridge just west of Ireland and more of a westerly type flow with that one. And then 2, which is the most unsettled option, but it's only 2 doing this, has a trough of low pressure more or less over the top of the country and extending into Scandinavia. So we may be able to hang on to high pressure into the second half of the, the month. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got, which is the 22nd of April. 21 members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure just out to our northwest. And winds are coming in from a north to north easy direction. So probably relatively dry, but quite cool. 17 with high pressure to the east, low pressure to the west. Um, relatively mild with that winds from the south, but could be a bit unsettled. And then 13 with high pressure sitting more or less over the top of the coast, that's going to be the driest and probably warmest solution as winds come in from the south to southeast. So again, nothing overly dramatic here into the second half of April, and possibly still even favouring high pressure within the East Island Summers. It's a very confused picture at the moment. So April is proving to be a very, very uh, confusing month to forecast. Finally, the CFSB2, so these are 500 millibar heights broken down into wheat beers. The first wheat beer takes us from the 7th to the 13th of April. The coming week with the CFS is dominated by high pressure sitting over and just to the east again. So you look at that, I think, and have a lot, of, a lot of dry weather. Um, but uh, it's just drilling down into the detail. It does look a little bit more change, especially as we get towards the Easter period and beyond it. Uh, week 2 is the 14th to the 20th of April, still with high pressure centred over, this time just to the west of the country. Low pressure happens to be to the north. Uh, again, you will think plenty of dry weather coming up with that. Week 3 is 21st to 27th of April, the high pressure then begins to pull to the northwest. Low pressure sinking through Scandinavia, winds are going more northwesterly. So, um, probably still relatively, relatively dry, but could be starting to get a little bit more unsettled there. And by the time we get through to week four, which is the 28th of April to 4th of May, uh, low pressure returns, winds going to the west. Obviously, that's more unsettled. But it is um, four weeks away, so we don't necessarily have to worry too much about it. But I think before we worry about uh, weather in like two, three, four weeks' time, 
we have to be a little bit concerned about what's happening in the next few days because there is still ongoing uncertainty about Easter and beyond. But you've clearly seen as we've gone through the model output that for the Easter period itself, we are setting up a rather more unsettled and changeable and somewhat cooler pattern than uh, looked likely a couple of days ago. So Easter could be rather showery. I don't mean it'd be a washout of the weekend. I think there will be plenty of useful dry weather um, if we could actually get out into it, which, of course, we can't because we're under lockdown, but you can go into your gardens. Um, but I think for Easter, there will be a, a, a sort of showery conditions. And then beyond that, we may be looking at more unsettled weather. But again, I do have to emphasize how uncertain things are at the moment. And quite what's causing this uncertainty, I'm not sure. Of course, we've got the AO and the NAO conflicting with one another, which tells us there are only indexes but driver weather, but it does tell us that the atmosphere is in a fight. Something else that might be driving this is that we are now very much down on aviation uh, observations. Of course, being in lockdown, there are nowhere near as many flights taking place. And so that could be having a bit of an, a bit of an effect on the model output, maybe. Um, April is not particularly a time of the year that you associate with model unreliability. It tends to be more into the summer and particularly late summer, early autumn, when you've got these tropical storms and hurricanes developing in the North Atlantic. That very much can throw the model output through late August, September that time of year, it, that can very much throw model output into disarray uh, when you've got those storms developing. But this isn't a particular time of year that you associate with uh, really unreliable uh, model output. So quite what's going on with this, I'm not sure. It could be down to lack of observational data from, uh, from aviation uh, data, perhaps, or maybe it's just one of those things. I don't suppose we'll ever know, uh, really. But it's making it a little bit difficult for us forecasters at the moment, I have to say. But uh, there we go. We shall be back tomorrow with your five-day forecast, and we will also have a week to 10-day video update as well tomorrow. And don't forget, we've got a live stream. Live stream will be coming up on the uh, Gazwa Vids uh, YouTube channel between 4 and 5 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Just let everybody check in, see how we're doing while we're under lockdown. Uh, right, that's it for today's video, so um, thanks for watching.